our Crygo 3 under C. Um, we have changed rear wheel speed sensor or ABS sensor and uh, it's still in the limp mode but without any warning lights. Um, I done the test on during driving with a little diagnostic tool um, and it still shows that that wheel is not turning. I know the sensor is right so the only other thing that it could be it's the magnetic ring uh, that is sending magnetic signal towards the sensor that is attached to the axle uh, that is faulty. On this age of the vehicle which is 2007 and now we are almost 2013 it's very likely to happen because that ring has uh, steel parts on it that can rust and break off and then it doesn't work anymore so I'm gonna now get on and replace that that ring one of the first things we'll have to do is remove this axle nut here and I don't like look of it I can see that axle end has been also damaged in past so I'll have to put some uh, penetrating oil on clean it up as best I can chip all the rust with some fine cold chisel or something let that penetrating oil work work in a little bit maybe put some heat as well and then um, try to undo it the way to undo that will be putting the wheel on without, without center cup lowering the vehicle down, handbrake on to give resistance and then you can use a big breaker bar with maybe some extensions and um, try to crack, crack that nut so let's clean it up first little update um, good thing rain has stopped I went to our local parts supplier um, motor parts direct to pick up replacement ring and guess what they have ordered wrong part they have ordered hub with a bearing thinking that ring magnetic ring or relactor ring is 
part of it like on many, on many vehicles is but on this Chrysler is not it actually sits over the uh, CV joint on the on the axle so apparently they couldn't get one then went to another local supplier Sussex engine supplies um, without even looking on a the computer they just said they don't sell ABS rings for safety reasons um, apparently if um, they're installed incorrectly or get damaged during installation um, poses the risk to safety of the vehicle in my opinion it's a big BS because um, with many other parts on a vehicle if installed incorrectly um, they don't they, they're not safe they they're posing big risk to safety so if you install brake calipers incorrectly that's big risk to safety safety um, tie tie and road you know rods rod ends they if you install them incorrectly they risk to safety um, anything anything you know love a ball joint if it's installed incorrectly if you don't tie it up you know properly and secure it it's big risk of you know risk to safety of the vehicle on a bend your wheel can fold and um, cause a crash so anyway i done a few phone calls rang up round and got euro euro parts uh, euro car parts in uh, town next to ours um, apparently they got one on stock I went there and they said yeah yeah we got one stock and I'll just and this is what they got ABS ring CV joint Mercedes E and C class apparently that's the one that fits on a Chrysler 300C I'm not convinced I'm not convinced because um, because I went online and looked for the details. There are companies selling these rings for Chrysler, and the size, inner diameter and outer diameter of the rings are not same. Um, on internet, what they say, the outer diameter of the ring should be 84.5. This one is 83 and inner diameter should be 80.5, this one is 79, also um, it says should be 96 I think, notches, this one has got far less, I don't even have to count them, that doesn't have 96 notches. There you go. That one we'll have to go back. Thank you, Eurocar Parts, for supplying the wrong part. The reason I was trying to avoid um, ordering is because at the moment we got uh, Royal Mail on strikes, postal strikes, um, everything that you order taking five times longer to deliver and we're right between Christmas and New Year which as well many companies many people don't work and they have more pressure from that point as well so I just thought if I just go to local local uh, part suppliers pick up part just get it done but obviously it's not so on the bright side, I got a car that doesn't work, so I'll have to get on and get it done. You can see that that's the state of the that nut and the axle end. Don't know what happened with that axle end. It just looks like it's been mullied with whatever. I think to have any chance of taking that out I'll have to grind this down a little bit 
just to narrow all these notches and maybe even shorten it and then try to get that nut out I have ground a little bit of the end of the drive shaft so I can get my 32 mil socket fully onto the nut and easiest way when it's all this seized up is you put a wheel back on without center out and you access that through there and then turn because the wheel with a car on with a wheel on on the ground will hold the entire hub stationary but I will try because I whacked it with a hammer and a chisel and I put some penetration oil on before that I heated it red hot the nut so I'm gonna try and see if I can crack this nut without that by just actually using a handbrake <coughs> yep it's on done it right like that like that this is the easiest one I done ever Ta -da. Well, the dreaded part it's done now what we need to do is take a brake caliper off Suspend it so it doesn't hang down. Take a, so brake caliper. Take ABS sensor out so it's out of the way, nice and safely. And then we can dismantle. I have to release the handbrake or parking brake. Take the disc out, and then I need to punch the axle in. So the spline gets disengaged from the from the hub. And then there are four hole, four screws, four bolts on the back that are holding um, our hub. We'll have to dismantle that as well. So for the brake caliper, I'll take the sliding bolts off. Then we can take a caliper off, then we have to take a cradle off. We got these two nuts or bolts down on the back. So we'll just do them one by one. So first thing first, brake caliper, ABS speed, speed sensor off. ABS speed sensor is held by 10 millimeter bolt. It's quite easy to do. Slacking it off. And then with fingers, and done, so bolt for it, unclip the lead, and little jiggle, and pull the sensor out, that's the sensor. So I'll just unclip it and let it hang far out of the way. Will be 15 so we got 15 millimeter uh, we just go back there 15 millimeter socket for the gliders Yeah. 
just want to compress the piston. Yeah, that's done. Get to the wire. And just gonna get this connected to this upper. Off. Plenty of meat on them, we'll just clean them up during the reassembly. And now we got these two bolts in the back. Let me just check. I think they're 19 millimeter. Okay. They are 19 millimeters. Slackened off. Let's check the top one. My bolts don't like to come out of shake. point out that there that's one of the bolts or back of the bolt back there it's another back of the bolt in there it's another one and down there will be the fourth one so I'm gonna spray some um, penetrating oil onto them sections might even try to um, put some heat on it first you can see it there that's the back of the bolt that comes from the other side so if I put a bit of heat concentrated heat on each tip of them bolts that will actually help de-seizing them Be 
it's windy. It's just a concentrated flame directly on end of the bolt until it's not hot anywhere else. It's a very small flame. Because I'll try to remove this hub without removing brake assembly. Another bolt. all this extra heat get me out of the trouble now I can Treating oil. Just get a bit of each one. Don't want to get any on my parking brake shoes. Really just doing concentrated, very minimal because any penetrating oil that hits the floor it's not helping unseizing any of the bolts a little thing I always forget to say don't just support your vehicle with a jack use the axle stand as well I supported axle stand on this section of the rear subframe because human skull will not survive crushing with any of these trust me they're like these like inverted torque pieces and locate them on the back and we can follow and watch closely the end of the bolt on this side to see is it starting to turn because you don't want to strip the heads very very tight space on the back and you have to work on blind unfortunately but I think this is one of the worst ones I just done and I cracked it open and I'm just doing it with fingers now so the applying heat applying heat on this side actually helped a lot just try to film this uh, you can see 
where that is. It's in line with our shock absorber strut and it's right there. It's very very tight space. Very tight. You can barely put two fingers there to hold this. I have to apologize for not filming exact points whilst I'm extracting all this because it's hard to get even camera on it. Well, now it's actually proving I can't get I can't get the bolt out. You can see there. Can't get bolt out because of the CV axle. It's on the way. So, but it's slackened off. That's good. So I'm just going to slacken off the other the other bolts and then I'm going to hit the axle here to push it back in. So Got another one up here. Yes. Top rear. It's coming undone. Put some more oil on this side. This one here, this top inner. I think I got it. There. Oh, I'll show you that. Now you can closely. Yep. That's the end of the bolt. And you can see it moving. There it is. So just gonna take now just gonna take now this like that and locate the head and just do it by fingers. That is success. Love that. Look at that. Let's see if I can get this one out. Good. One more on the bottom. Yes. Also, during reassembly, it is very important to torque them up. 
properly because they're high tensile bolts because they're meant to hold these four the holding entire hub wheel bearing and the wheel on you don't want that coming apart so now let me try just to punch just use normal hammer Yep, that's out. And need to release. These are the few bolts. Right, that bearing is good. Now, okay, now what we can see here obviously, the brake assembly sits there. This section, this part was there, and here we got our ABS ring, or well, the outer part. Oops, sorry, my, sorry. Let me just put this on a normal. Right, that's it. We got our ABS ring, the outer part of it. You can see how fine the notches are on. 90 something notches the other part of this ring that metal lip part there that's pressed over the axle this is our axle so just to compare this oh, I took it back to the van okay so I'm going to blow this dust off with a compressed air and then try to get maybe screwdriver or some pick or something try to get that metal ring out part and this is the part that we're sitting on you can see completely disintegrated
there you go broken up completely seating area on it. It doesn't look too shabby. Looks nice and clean because this metal part of the ring was tight on it. I will run a little bit of very fine sandpaper around that edge of the CV joint um, just to make sure that it's all nice and clean and then we'll go from there. Now, as you can see, Eurocar parts, here's the ring they said is going to fit, here's our old ring, I don't, there's no point of even opening this because I'm going to return it, you can see that our old ring can sit over it, it's much bigger, so bad guesswork, Eurocar parts very bad guesswork and you can see also on the side when you see little magnetic notches the old ring has got twice as many at least twice as many than the new one so even if i could fit this one because of the number of notches the sensor would give false reading all the time to ecu which is wrong so no you can't fit Mercedes ABS ring onto Chrysler. You can't. Right, I got a bit of result. Um, I, as I explained earlier, I did took the old ring out and then start making a phone calls. Googled every single spare car part shop in radius of 30 miles rung about 15 shops including main Chrysler dealer main Chrysler dealer said to me that they don't sell it as a as an individual part they sell it as a part of the axle which is about 600 pounds British pounds it's expensive I don't want that um, so I just thought I'll just order it online and I'm gonna nip down the Eurocar parts and return the wrongly supplied uh, ABS ring so went into shop explained to guys said they'll look this is how it's supposed to look like it's like this the one you supply is completely different and he goes oh, I really apologize for that but that's the one it shows on our computer on our system he types it back in again looks at it and the photo on the computer it's exactly as the one I got not the one he gave me and then he looked at it and looked at the part number and he said ah I'm sorry I picked the wrong one up <laughs> so he went out in the back and actually got the correct one he said I really I'm really sorry I just picked the wrong one up this is the one you need and I said yeah exactly that is the one I need so short lines just turn the camera this is the old one this is the new replacement okay this is the part number 659 770108 that's from Starline yeah and that's the part number and that's ABS ring, CV joint, Mercedes E and C class as well. So, for anyone there, yes, I'm correcting myself from early in the video when I was looking at that wrongly supplied metal ring. Um, this is the correct part and that is part same as on Mercedes. So let's go and fit it. Now, because of running around trying to find this ring, losing the daylight, so I'll be quick. 
and put a little bit. Don't have to be quick and also finish it tomorrow. So it's got a bit of wet and dry. Wet and dry paper. Some paper. Just a rub it around. Just on top of the screwdriver. Run it right around the edge. Clean that glass a little bit. Where is going to sit that new ABS ring? Brake cleaner. Get some tissue. This brake cleaner does dry quickly, but still, just gonna clean it. Just dry it out a bit more. Right. Have a look at this sensor jobby. Right, it's getting dark. I'll just turn a flash off. You can see, it's getting dark. There's a moon there. Hello, moon. And I don't like to do this kind of work um, with my little flashlight thing of the camera because you can't really see well it's very hard so I'll leave at this point I'll leave it for tomorrow for a bit of day daylight Here we are later on next day. Rain has stopped, so good visibility. So I'm gonna take a bit of grease and grease up this uh, inside of this ring. Also try to put a bit of grease to dry that out first from rain. And some people say, oh, we should put maybe cover it up with some polythene or bag or something. But it's not necessary. This is a part of the car that is designed to get wet. So I'll just put some grease on it. this so makes our life a little bit easier and try to just to start it up a little bit so it doesn't go skewed I'm gonna put correct size sleeve Sleeve. Mm. 
not deep enough. So let's see what else can I use. So if that's gonna be any good. Yep. This is just one of the cheap sets for bearing removal tool kits. That's the job. To the end, I think it came this disc came to the spline here. Let's see, still needs needs to go in further. Need to shim this out. Shame that this disc is not slightly longer. Just looking, what can I use up? What else? To push the bottom in. Bit fiddly and try a few different pieces and see it's not going in square so I might be able to square it up with this bit. I think it's squaring up. Let's check it. Whilst I'm doing this, I'll put a bit of grease on this axle thread. Right, it's almost there. It's almost there. But need to find a way of sleeving this I can what I can do I can shim it I'll just shortly explain uh, we've got this spline here that widens up further than the thread part the length or length of this tube is not enough to protrude further than this widening and then this disc hits that section and doesn't want to push it any further so I need to increase that gap so I'm gonna use two of these bolts so put it this way put that one not back on and then two of these bolts and try to keep them on a bit fiddly these things are always fiddly oops
looks at the bottom section this section here still needs to go in a little bit so I'll just concentrate on that bit Just trying to press this in nice and square with a with the axle. always tap it in place as well that looks that looks good that looks good as you can see ABS ring it's all evenly pushed in now I can just Clean that up, grease up some sections and uh, put it all back together. Right, so just realign this. The plate cleaner. Just wipe these pads first. And then this right it's all cleaned next we got these four bolts that coming from the back side that are holding that will hold our wheel bearing assembly hub. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop a little bit of um, thread lock just a tiny little bit in each one of these sections so once they're all torqued up they don't like to come out on their own not a lot just a little bit first clean that as well wipe it Tiny little bit. Little droplet. Put some grease on the spline. Now, I need to feed this in, pass the parking brake, now, 
Okay, let's finger tight. And Unfortunately, it's uh, starting to rain again, so I'll have to be quick. So anyway, um, I need to torque up them four bolts on, from the back, them E14s, then main axle nut needs to be tightened up and torqued as well, and uh, then I can put a brake caliper carrier. That section there on and then brake caliper with the pads and disc sorry disc and then brake caliper and pads get that done and the last thing will be putting the our sensor still laying here on the ground away putting sensor down into that little hole there and then clear the codes test the car so I'm not going to be filming this now on boots because it's just reverse reversal of removal and I need to be quick now to get all this done before rain. Just a quick one about torquing up the bolts. Um, so we're going to have axle nut is going to be about 210, 215 newton meters. Uh, caliper cradle 120 newton meters, glide pins only 32 newton meters. And uh, yeah, the wheel nuts, 150 new newton meters, and that's about it. All I have to do now um, is just check that sensor and that wheel for rotation. It's basically the same way how I discovered that wheel is the issue. Um, system scan, automatic. This is a section that does ABS. Um, travel codes, no DTCs, that's what we found out after we replaced uh, the sensor itself. But then it still didn't work because it was the ring that was issued. So if we go to data stream, um, if I just go rewrite wheel speed, that's all I need. All I need, rewrite wheel speed. Yeah, 
There you go, it's picking up even mm. on a <laughs> two kilometers an hour. Mm. So let's go into the verse. Yeah, it's picking up on reverse as well. So I'm not going to be filming this because it's I haven't got any device to hold my camera whilst I'm driving. Um, I'm just going to go for a short spin and just check it. Is it going to change gears as it should? And then that will be it.